Hello everybody, this is Ice, and welcome back to another video. Alright, so today we are continuing our Redstone Calculator tutorial series, and what I want to do today is to get a working screen, and also to talk about exactly how big numbers this calculator will be able to deal with. So that's kind of the plan for today. Most of what we'll be doing is making this screen, and maybe we'll get to building some other stuff too. So, I did get this sign built for me over my calculator input panel here. It's pretty neat. Not a necessary part of the calculator, but, uh, we'll just leave it. It looks neat, so, yeah. Let's get started. Alright, so, first of all, I just want to briefly say how big the numbers this calculator can handle. So, the numbers that you'll be able to add and subtract are going to go from negative 65,535 to positive 65,535. Now that's not a number you necessarily have to remember. What that means is that this calculator is going to take 16-bit input. So 16 binary bits are going to go into the input of each input of the calculator. They'll get added in a 16-bit adder, and that's that. Next off, we have multiplication. Now, if you know anything about binary multiplication, which you don't necessarily have to to do this series, but I'll just tell you a fact about it. If you know anything about binary multiplication, you'll know that if you try to multiply, say, an n-bit number by an n-bit number, you'll get a 2n-bit number out. You'll get twice as many bits out as you came in with. So, for instance, if I tried to multiply to 16-bit numbers, I would get 32-bit numbers out, which is kind of ridiculous. So when we do multiplication, we're going to limit this to exactly 8-bit um, numbers. So the numbers will, that will go into the multiplication inputs will go from negative 255 to positive 255. And this is just in the interest of saving some space and saving some digits that we'll have to make on the output panel. So that leaves division. Now division is interesting because you can actually have, for instance, decimal places. Now the division our calculator is going to do is going to be a very simple algorithm for division, not floating point or anything. And what's going to happen is that there are going to be three bits of output beyond the radix. Now, what do I mean when I say that? I mean that basically there will be three binary places past the, what you would call the decimal point, but is in binary. So for instance, in binary, you'd call it the radix. Now we'll go into much more detail in this towards the end of the series when we do division, but for now, just know that there are going to be three post radix binary places, and if you know what that means, great. If you don't, that's no problem. Alright, so let's get to actually building this screen. So, the block I, I like to use to build screens is wool, and this is for visibility purposes. Um, it's very hard to see screens of blocks that aren't wool. If you have some other preference, then by all means go ahead and do it, but I'm going to use wool. So when you do this, well, I suppose we should have an exact number of blocks we come out from here. So start here, and for instance, go, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Maybe 35 blocks out. That's just an arbitrary number, but it should look something like this when you do that. So we'll take 35 blocks to be our uh, starting point. Add one more block, and uh, you can get rid of this thing now. Wish I didn't have to do it on camera, but it would take even longer to do with world edit. So now we have our corner, and let me just check exactly how long the screen needs to be. All right, so first of all, for our horizontal area, you want to select this one block with world edit, and you want to stack it... 59 times, and then you will have a 60 block long screen that should look something like this. Then, 
you'll want to grab this block again, and you'll want to go stack 41 you. And these are just random numbers, but it turns out that they will house our screen size quite nicely. So, to fill in the frame, you can come up here, and once again, this is pretty boring, but you can go ahead and stack it 41 times. Oops. Um, oh, yeah, 59 times, sorry. <laughs> Wrong side. And then come down here. And stack it 41 up. And now you should have a frame for your calculator screen, if this was done right. That looks about this size. Now it is quite large because there are a lot of, place of uh, places we're going to need. So now you can go ahead and fill this in with wool. And what we're going to do is grab that block and go up here and grab this block and that. And then we're going to set wool. All right, so this is our screen. Slightly unwieldy, but uh, we'll have to make do. All right, so let's get started. All right, so to get started actually making this screen, the first thing you want to do is punch out a hole down in this bottom corner um, that looks like this. So it looks kind of like an eight. We have a top segment, two segments going down, another middle one here, two more segments going down, and a last segment at the bottom. So when you look at it from far away, it should look like an 8. Now what this is, is the template for a 7 segment display, and we'll fill it in with pistons in a moment, but you just want to have it as a template for now. So once you have this, you want to go ahead and grab this block with your World Edit tool, and this block, I believe, and stack this over seven times. And what you should end up with is a pretty nice looking seven segment display. So these five displays here are our pre radix bits, or pre radix digits, I mean, sorry. That means that these are the, like, the whole number part of our, the integer part of our number, of our output. These last three bits are the post radix pings, so they'll represent the decimal or the fractional part of the number. I'm just going to move this over two more blocks because I can. Like so. Uh, actually, that doesn't need to be done. Alright, so this is what you should have. And the next thing we want to do is make a line of sandstone. Um, maybe a block above here. Alright, so in fact, before we do anything else, we just want to extend this screen out a little bit. And this is going to be for the purpose of accommodating the equals sign and sign on the output. So what you want to do is you want to um, stack this out, I think, eight times, if I'm correct. If I've done the math correctly, and I have. So you want to stack this eight times out. Grab this block at the end and stack it 41 times up, as before. And now you can come in here and select this block and come to the top and select this block and set it to wall. So you've just extended the size of your screen a little bit and you can fill that in at the top. Now we can actually add in the minus sign and that, so we want to break these three blocks, like so. That's our minus sign. Then we want to come up here and set up an equal sign here. So now we should have something that looks a little bit like this. And now we can move on to our inputs. So when we're making our inputs, the first thing we want to do is have some sort of separation line. So if I were you, I would grab a black block, I like stained clay, and move up, skip two blocks from this top, and go here. Grab this block here, and go all the way over horizontally to the other side, if we can do that, and set this 
to whatever your black block happens to be. So now you should have a nice line separating these two. Alright, so so far we should have something that looks a little bit like this. To set up our inputs, what we need to do is we need to find, or what you need to do is you need to find these five rightmost digits in your output and go up. So as an example, one, two, so we go to one, two, three, four, five. And you'd set up your seven segment display exactly a block above here. So this is what I mean. You want to line these up so that these line up with the bottom five bits of this. So when you do that, you can punch out some more segment segment displays. Since you'll need two inputs, you will need to do it twice. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, we can move up another two blocks. Oh yeah, without a problem. In fact... Alright, so as of now you should have this, and now we want to pretty much do our inputs as quickly as we can. So you want to come over here and find the five rightmost digits of your output. So one, two, three, four, five in this case. Of course, these three are your post radix digits, but that's fine. Doesn't make any difference. Um, you want to line yourself up with 5th to left, so for instance, this one. Alternatively, you could count 4 over this way, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So you want to find this digit here, and horizontally or vertically line up with it. Now from here, you want to count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 blocks, and punch out a 7 segment display here. Like so. Pretty simple. Then you want to go up one, two, three, four blocks and go up another and punch out a seven segment display here. Now you want to make sure that these are in line as possible, which is just for aesthetic purposes, so you don't have things out of line. And also it will line up the seven segment displays in the back when we make them quite nicely. So now you should have something that looks a little bit like this. So now, you want to stack these over, like so. You want to grab this block here. Then you want to come up here and grab this block here. And then, you can stack it four times over. So what you should now have is something that looks a little bit like this. Now, the, now we'd have to actually add the pistons, which is not a very fun part, but this is what your screen will roughly look like. Another thing we can do is add in the signs. So we can have a potential minus sign here, like so. So now this number could be negative. We can also have a potential minus sign here. And the other thing we need to do is add in our math operation signs, which are going to go in this area. So, what you want to do is take this minus sign and move back horizontally to the end. So, once you reach this block, you want to go over one, two, three, and then build a plus sign. So, again, we're just cutting this stuff out. So, a plus sign, and then a minus sign, and then a time sign, which we'll represent by this little x. It's not the best, but it's alright and a division sign, which we can represent by a slash. Computer scientists generally like to represent division by a slash. And that is about that. Now we have our arithmetic symbols, and the next thing to do is start filling it in with pistons, which isn't necessarily the most fun part. Alright, so filling in the pistons is pretty much a grind. We don't need pistons on our... Um, equals sign, so I'm just going to not bother. Here we'll need pistons, all sticky pistons of course. <coughs> all sticky pistons, so grab your three sticky pistons for, for instance, this minus sign. And do that. Now you want to build sticky pistons for behind these, so you want to go two blocks out from this and basically have a sticky piston in front of each block, like so. 
Now I'm not going to show nearly all of this on camera, the rest of it you can do on your own, because it's exceptionally boring and a waste of time in my episode. So I'll just do it on one second second display, and we can go on and do it on the others. So, I guess I can just do all of the pistons at once, and then fill in the blocks after. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then go ahead and put on your blocks. Again, this is kind of a stupid thing, but, you know, it's fine. So, you should look like that. And for this one, you can, in fact, even stack it over. So you can grab... Whoops. You can grab this block here. And this block here. And do something like stack seven. And you will have eight nice seven-segment displays. That's pretty cool. And I uh, will leave it to you to do the rest of the seven-segment displays. Good luck. Alright, so when you're done, you should have a screen that looks something like this. Um, not too bad, I don't think. If you want to see the pistons in back, just to make sure you did it right, it looks like this. Pistons on everything except for the equal sign. The one other thing that we need to do is you want to go in here, grab this block, then come back around and grab this block on the output. You want to go over here and move this one block over, like so. So this will have moved your entire 7 to segment displays over, and you'll end up with this hole, which you can fill in. Then you want to, you'll want you have this extra space here, in which you're going to just stick a hole and put a block behind it, no piston. And what this is, is it is our radix point. So now, this is it. This is our full calculator screen. Next time, we'll start actually making this screen work with some seven-segment displays. And yeah, that should be pretty awesome. So I will see you then, and hopefully you enjoyed, and as always, well, bye now.